Hello, this is John Wettenkamp with the National Weather Service Office in La Crosse, Wisconsin, and here is an update to the 2020 spring flood outlook. The main message for this year is that there is a well above normal flood risk, especially along the main stem of the Mississippi River, and along the Mississippi tributaries there is an above normal flood risk, but this is variable from location to location. Keep in mind, just because there is a well above normal flood risk does not mean that there is the potential for widespread significant flooding. Right now the probabilities favor minor flooding with the potential for some areas to see moderate flooding and smaller chances to see major flooding. Contributing factors to this year's flood potential include high river levels, especially for this time of year, high soil moisture across the region, and that's due to repeated rounds of precipitation, some of that heavy precipitation across the area uh, that includes all the way back uh, during the last year, a deep snowpack in place mainly across northern areas. And it's important to remember that this forecast will depend heavily on future precipitation and temperature trends. And the conditions over the next month will be key in determining how the flooding situation evolves this spring. So what has changed since the last outlook on February 13th? Well, precipitation from the period January 27th to February 25th has been near normal along the Interstate 90 corridor. However, locations across northern Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, and even into portions of Iowa and northern Illinois have experienced below normal precipitation during that period. So that's good news for the drier conditions that we've been experiencing or below normal precipitation across northern Minnesota and northern Wisconsin because that uh, is the location of the headwaters of the Mississippi and Wisconsin rivers. But this doesn't mean that we are out of the woods for flooding potential this year. Stream flow conditions, how have they changed since the last outlook? Well, looking at the January average on the left that we saw during the last flood outlook, we saw stream flow values that were in the 90th percentile or higher across the entire upper Mississippi River Basin. So those are all the areas that you see shaded in the darker blue and black. That's where there's a greater than 90th percentile or much above normal stream flow values. Those values have decreased a bit, but these can change over time, uh, especially once we start seeing melt and any uh, rainfall or precipitation that would cause river rises. So over the last 28 days, the image shown on the right, the stream flow values have returned to near normal values, at least for that time frame. But we are, we are still seeing some basins experiencing much above normal to near historic high values. Surface soil moisture conditions, uh, those have not changed. Uh, this is a comparison showing where we were at last year, uh, February 25th, 2019, the image on the left, and February 24th, 2020, the image on the right. And the blue shaded areas are where there is a 90th percentile or higher value for soil moisture conditions. And these are based on a 1948 to 2009 climatology. So last year, we had uh, more isolated areas of wet soil conditions. And this year, it's pretty much the entire upper Midwest and Great Lakes region that has wet soil conditions. So what is this doing? This is increasing the runoff potential uh, with snow melt. Even after we melt the frost that's in the ground or thaw that frost that's in the ground, uh, even after that, uh, any snow melt or future precipitation is likely going to go directly into runoff and into the river systems. Snowfall so far this year has been uh, slightly above normal across portions of northern Wisconsin and northern Minnesota. The current snowpack conditions across the area, we're seeing snowfall depths range from around 2 inches across portions of Iowa and far southern Wisconsin and then increasing as we go to the north uh, and we're seeing areas of 8 inches to as much as two feet across portions of northern Minnesota and northern Wisconsin. So one of the important factors that we look at in that snowpack is how much liquid is contained within that snowpack. And we're still seeing liquid amounts of three to six inches plus across northern Minnesota into northern Wisconsin and further south, closer to the I-90 corridor, 
the liquid amounts range from around a half inch to two inches of liquid. So we haven't released liquid yet from that snowpack. Uh, the snow, the warmer days that we've recently been experiencing have mainly been going into compressing the snow, ripening some of that snow. Uh, but the the liquid is still held within that pack. But we will start to see some some of that released here over the next week or so. So let's take a look at some long range temperature and precipitation outlooks. Uh, here's from the period March 3rd through March 7th. The image on the left is the probability for above uh, normal or below normal temperatures. Anywhere, anywhere you see the orange shaded areas or red shaded areas, that's where there's a probability of above normal for temperatures. Uh, any place you see the grays, that's no, normal, probability for normal. And any place you see uh, the blue or dark blue or sh bluer shades, that's a probability for below normal. So for temperatures across the region, there is a signal for above normal temperatures from, from the March 3rd to 7th period. And for precipitation, uh, kind of the same, same, same uh, probability here, but same probabilities here, but uh, slightly different color shadings. Uh, the green areas are where there's a signal for above normal, and uh, tan and brown areas are where there's a signal for below, and again, gray is near normal. Uh, we are seeing a signal for above normal precipitation across the region. So we should start seeing some snow melt, and unfortunately we could start seeing uh, an increase in precipitation across the region. But However, uh, the signal isn't overly strong locally, but it is there. So let's look for, through the entire period of March for temperatures and precipitation. Uh, equal chances for temperatures, so we're not seeing a strong signal for above, near normal, or below normal. However, we are seeing a signal uh, through the month of March of below normal precipitation. So in the near term, we could have above normal precipitation, but as we get more into the month of March, uh, we, the signal is uh, for us to start drying out a bit. So that's good news. Uh, in regard to spring flooding potential. Let's look out even further uh, from the March, April, May time frame. Uh, not seeing much of a signal there for temperatures locally as far as being above or below normal, so equal chances. For precipitation, uh, we are seeing a signal for above normal precipitation, so that could be a concern uh, as we get in through the spring months and into the spring thaw and potential flooding. So let's uh, dig into some flood probability information now, and I want to show where you can show you where you can find that information on the internet. If you go to our Advanced Hydrologic Prediction Service page, or you can go to water.weather.gov and click on your location. There's the option for a long-range flood risk. So you'll see that tab circled here on the slide. That tab will open up a page that shows the long-range flood probabilities, and it defaults to a 50% chance of exceeding river levels from the February through April, April time frame. So all those boxes you see there are forecast points and the corresponding uh, probabilities for a greater than 50% chance of minor, moderate, or major flooding in the green shaded areas are where there's a left, less than a 50% chance of flooding. So let's look at some of these longer range probabilities across the local area. We're seeing that well above normal risk along the main stem of the Mississippi River. Uh, there are signals there for uh, greater than 50% chance of major flooding. However, it's just over 50% chance. Uh, the higher probabilities are for minor flooding. The risk is more variable as you get into southeast Minnesota, northeast Iowa, into the Mississippi tributaries. And the same holds true across central and southwest Wisconsin, where, again, there is an above normal risk, but it is variable from location to location, and that's uh, highly driven by the, the, the current uh, snowpack conditions and stream flow conditions. So what is your most likely flood level, and what is the most likely flood level for, this spring, for the spring months? Well, let's look at the 95th. Uh, chance of exceeding a certain flood level, and this I think this tells uh, tells the story a little bit better, showing this graphic, where once you flip over to the 95th, 95% uh, chance of of flooding, you see that you're not seeing as many purple values show up, especially along the Mississippi 
uh, Mississippi River, uh, you're seeing more of the minor flooding show up, more of the orange shaded boxes and red shaded boxes for some moderate flooding. So right now the probabilities would favor minor to maybe a few spots seeing moderate flooding. But again, this will really depend on what we see for future temperatures and precipitation. So how do we arrive at those values? And I'm just going to show an example here of how these probabilities are determined and uh, how we assign the, the flooding potential for these locations. So let's, let's look at an example. And here I picked the Mississippi River at La Crosse. So if you're on this page and you go to the Mississippi River at La Crosse, click on that box, it'll open up the probabilistic forecast and you'll see a weekly chance uh, for exceeding a particular stage on any particular date. If you click on the probability information tab and then on the chance of exceeding levels during the entire time frame, this, these are how we're, we're deriving those, the color shading on those, on those boxes. So the blue line on this graphic shows a historic simulation um, and that's looking at a, a history at a particular location of what, what's been experienced. And the black line is a conditional simulation uh, showing the, what we could expect for given, given the current conditions. Uh, the vertical axis is stage at this location, and the horizontal axis is the exceedance probability. So on any given year, based on historical probabilities. Let's just look at what, what are the odds for seeing a, a stage of six feet on any given year. So six feet at La Crosse, uh, pretty high probability of seeing that uh, from the period uh, March 2nd through May 31st, historically. This year, however, uh, let's say we want to know what are the probabilities of seeing a moderate flooding or a, a flood stage of thir 13 feet and go, going up to 13 feet, uh, we can see that there's a very high probability of seeing that and, and just above, uh, greater than a 98% chance, 95% chance. And then once we get into the major category, those probabilities start to drop off. So the odds of seeing a major, a major flood this year, uh, and that would mean river stages, a river stage of 15.5 feet here in this graphic is right around 60%. And then as we get higher in stage, those probabilities uh, fall off. So that's one way to read that graphic is, uh, again, here, if we just look at the 95th percentile for this year and where that compares, what flood stage does that uh, correspond to for this year's conditional simulation and fall the 95th percentile up until we intersect the conditional simulation line and that would give us a uh, probability of 95% of, of seeing a flood stage of a little over 13 feet. So in summary, uh, putting the flood risk into perspective this year, there is an above normal risk for flooding. However, the probabilities favor minor flooding at many locations. Uh, there are higher chances for moderate flooding at a few locations. And uh, major flooding can't be ruled out this year, but it it doesn't mean that it's likely. Um, it's really going to depend on future precipitation and temperature trends through this spring. And the conditions over the next month will be key in determining how the flooding situation will evolve. The next spring flood outlook will be released on Thursday, March 12th. So we invite you to Come back and uh, view this video for an update or check out our webpage and you can find the latest information on the 2020 spring flood outlook at weather.gov slash lacrosse 2020 flood outlook. Thanks for watching. For additional information, check out our internet homepage, this website shown here, or see us on social media.